Module 6 further discusses curves with rotational motion. Welcome to Engineering Physics. In the discussion we just had earlier, it would show that distance traversed by a point on the edge of the orbit will be so much more than that traveled by a particle closer to the center. So how do we work on the principle that in a single system, which is rotating, all elements are similar as they are considered one system. Computations will be in angular motion instead of translational motion. Angular displacement is the first parameter to be discussed in rotational motion. Notated as theta, this is the angle swept out by the rotation. Take note that the unit of theta is in radians, where one revolution or 360 degrees is equal to two pi radians. The next rotational motion parameter is the angular velocity. Similar with the definition of rectilinear velocity, it is taken as the angular displacement per unit time and it is denoted by the Greek letter omega. For direction of positive velocity, this would be taking the rotation of counterclockwise or following the first quadrant to the fourth quadrant in the system. Moreover, the average angular velocity is taken as the relative angular velocity between two displacements over the time covered, or that would be final theta less initial theta is equal to final time less initial time. Instantaneous angular velocity, on the other hand, will be integrating calculus as d theta all over the derivative of time. With velocity, there would also be acceleration, and similarly, angular acceleration is the change in angular velocity per unit time. Angular acceleration is noted as alpha with the unit's radians per square seconds. For the average angular acceleration, the formula will be considered the relative values, which could be changed in omega to the change in time, or that would be final omega less initial omega all over final time less initial time. And with calculus, we can take the derivative of omega with respect to the derivative of time as instantaneous angular acceleration. Let's move on with circumferential velocity, which is also known as tangential velocity. Taking a sector of a circle with radius r, let's denote the included angle as theta and the displacement as s. With a small portion of theta, we can say that theta is equal to s all over r, or that would be displacement s is equal to the radius r times theta. And also from linear velocity, we know that the velocity is the change of displacement to that of time. So plugging displacement in this equation, we get delta r theta all over delta t. Earlier, we also identified that omega or angular velocity is the change in theta with the change in time. So we can simplify the equation for circumferential velocity as v is equal to r omega, which is given in meters per second. Circumferential acceleration is also called tangential acceleration. We can derive it using linear acceleration, that is a is equal to dv all over dt. And by changing linear velocity to circumferential velocity, v sub c, or that is r omega, we arrive at a sub t is equal to d of r omega all over dt. Note that the radius r in this case is a constant, so we can arrange the formula as a sub t is equal to r d omega all over dt. And from previous discussion, we can identify alpha as alpha is equal to d omega all over dt. So circumferential acceleration can be computed as a sub t is equal to r alpha in terms of meters per second. And we also have radial acceleration, which is actually the acceleration drawing the object to the center. You have been introduced with this parameter as a centripetal acceleration. So starting from its formula in circular motion as v squared all over r, and knowing that v is given as r omega, so we can denote it as the square of r omega all over r, which eventually would be r omega squared given in meters per square second. Let's take an example. A rotating disk speeds up to 30 radians per second from rest in 6 seconds. What is the average angular acceleration of the disk? With average angular acceleration, we can use a formula 
alpha is equal to final less initial omega all over delta t. Take note that the rotating disk comes from rest. That is why our initial values would be taken as zero. Placing our values, we have 30 less zero all over six less zero would give us positive five radians per square seconds. This would mean that the velocity is positive showing counterclockwise motion and acceleration came up to be positive that would be a counterclockwise acceleration as well, making speed to increase. Example 2 states that a wheel slows down from 90 radians per second to 60 radians per second in 4 seconds. What is the average angular acceleration of the wheel? Using the similar formula, alpha is equal to final less initial omega all over delta t, we can plug in our values as 60 less 90, all over 4 less 0, giving us negative 7.5 radians per square second. The velocity of 60 radians per second is counterclockwise as it is positive, but the acceleration turned out to be negative, making it clockwise, which slows down the speed as a result. Following the same pattern, we can draw out a conclusion that the other motion formulas could also be drawn from linear motion and simply changing the annotation of some parameters. For x is equal to v1 plus v2 all over 2 times t, we can draw it with its counterpart theta is equal to omega1 plus omega2 all over 2 times t. Next, we have final velocity is equal to v0 plus at, which would have its counterpart as final omega is equal to omega0 plus alpha t. Then we could have x is equal to v0 t plus half of at squared, which would have its angular motion counterpart as theta is equal to omega naught t plus half of alpha t squared. Next would be x is equal to final velocity times time less one half of a t squared, which would have its counterpart as theta is equal to omega f t less half of alpha t squared. Final velocity squared is equal to initial velocity squared plus 2ax, which would have its angular motion counterpart as final omega squared is equal to omega naught squared plus 2 alpha theta. Module 6c will discuss dynamics of rotation.